Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again today. Mega tank. If you haven't been here before, this is my DIY tank. This is Gordon. Um, it's eight foot by four foot by three foot. And it's been bugging me for a while. Now you're probably thinking, it's leaking again. <laughs> and you'd be right, yeah, it is. But that's not why I'm doing this today. First, we're concentrating on some pipe work that I've been meaning to do for a while. And we're going to do it today. So I'm draining down uh, mega tank because it has one fatal flaw really and um, what we're going to do is we're going to put on some ball valves to the pipes that go in and out of mega tank so i can control how it works a little bit more what i'm talking about is these so you can see here i've got a ball valve on this one and um, there's two pipes that return water from the tank to the sump which is down here and two that go back in to feed the tank the only one that's got a ball valve on it is this one and what that means is if the power was to go out for whatever reason the water will drain to the lowest point of the highest pipe the highest point of the lowest pipe too much water will drain and it will overflow the sump because the sump's not big enough to handle the volume of water should the power fail now the power doesn't fail that often but this thing up here this is my Felix Smart it's a smart aquarium controller it's basically a fancy socket set um, or a fancy set of sockets you can set schedules and timers for all the this power on the back of it so i've got the lights running off it i've got the sump pump running off it i've got various things that measures and does all kinds of fancy things it's great but it's a bit temperamental so the green light you can see going back and forward that just means that it's working and it's happy but every now and again it loses connection so if it can't see the wi-fi it just hangs and when it hangs you can't do anything you can't turn things on can't turn things off and i have to turn it off to make sure that I can reset everything and control everything properly again but when I turn it off its power cycle takes so long that the tank drains because the sump pump isn't running so unless I get in there and unplug the sump pump and I can never remember which one it is plug that into another one big mess so we're going to fix that by installing some shut off valves to all these pipes meaning that I can turn the valves all to off so nothing can go in or out I can power cycle it at will jobs are good in now, I suppose the smarter among you are thinking, why don't you just stop using that for the sump pump? I kind of wanted to do this anyway, just so as I had a bit more control over these things. So I'm using that as the excuse, but it'll be a good thing to have more control over all these things. So if I was just doing the pipe work and wanted to sort that out a little bit, this, I could just drop the water level this much and that would be fine. I'd be able to do that. Everything would be good. I am going to glue these back in place with some PVC adhesive. So I do want to leave, leave it a little while while it cures and stuff. So... Yeah, I've not got the filtration running for all that's all going, so I'm going to get the fish out and move them into other tanks. But the other reason I'm going to get the fish out is I have a big spare tank at the moment. It gives me a chance to get into the tank, dry it completely, and do a little bit of a repair. Uh, down in this corner here, something's not right. We've got the tiniest of tiny leaks. Uh, it's just mega tank. It leaks. I've come to accept it now. I'm no longer upset by the fact that it leaks every now and again. It's a tiny leak. If I don't fix it now, I, then I fill up my other tanks. I don't have a space to get the fish into another tank. This is the time that I get to make that right. So I'm fairly confident I know what the problem is. So I just want to dry it, drain it, drain it, then dry it, make a fix, and we should be good for a long time. And now, if you're wondering, why didn't you just install these valves when you built it the first time? It's a very good point. Um, I just didn't have enough. <laughs> this is, I thought, nah. I didn't think it through. So, it's just a case of, now there's no water going through these pipes, I can just saw them off, install the valves, glue them up, it should be good to go. I'm just going to use a little hacksaw rather than any power tools or anything. And it should just be a case of roughly lining them up. And with a new hacksaw blade, it's fairly straightforward. Cutting them in a straight line, however, seems to be beyond me, so we'll tidy that up a little bit. A moment of truth to the by the right size. In, in theory, I bought the same ones, so it should be just a case of that. Good to go. And then I've got this PVC adhesive that's for this type of PVC. And it should just be a case of using the little uh, thing to coat both the inside and the outside. So we start with... Ooh, that is pungent. A little bit round there, a 
little bit of rain there. Good to go. And then the same on the bottom piece. So again, another of Graham's five minute job that's taken him a year to get around to doing. Try not to get it all over your hands, but I have done. Ooh. And then the same with these two. So these are the overflows from the tank which go into the sump and then the sump pumps back through these two. Now this is just one line that I've split into two. So I could just do it further down there as one, but I might as well have two. These are 25 mil returns and 40 mil overflows. So I shall do the same, just give them a quick cut. Same idea, round and around the other side. And round the inside of the valve. Stuff does set pretty, set pretty quick, so you want to get it on fast and lined up fast. Otherwise you have to cut it again to set it up. Fantastic. Just wait for all that to set now. It should be about five minutes really. So the stuff says, um, I think it'll, it's pretty much done after about half an hour, but if it's pressure pipe, you're meant to leave it a lot longer. I am going to be able to leave it longer because I want to do more work on the tank. So the next job is to get these fish out and redistribute them along other tanks. You can tell they're a little bit apprehensive. I'll be gentle. This is for your own good. It's to make your home better. So the problem is this corner here. So right in the corner, if you remember my last mega tank videos, I reinforced it from the inside with some brackets. I didn't do there near the front. And there it's just, it's a bit wet. It's not dripping, it's not pouring out or anything. It's just moist, which means the water is getting through somehow. There's a little bit of discoloration. I don't know how well it's coming across there where it's starting to make the wood damp. It's not helped by the fact that during the rains and the floods, the floor floods, and that makes everything look wet, so it's hard to diagnose or see where it's coming from. But if I get in under the tank, I can see in that corner, it's a little bit damp. So what I'm gonna go and do is get the water out, dry it out, move everything out, uh, dry it for a day, put in an extra bracket to hold things steady, fiberglass over everything in that corner, liquid rubber over everything in that corner and we should be good to go. In terms of where the fish are going, Gordon and Brian, so the snakehead and the giant garami and the two Oscars are going in the five foot aquarium there. It will only be for a few days. Yes, it's way too small for them, but it'll be fine for a few days. And the silver dollars and the severum are gonna go into the grow out tank, which is down here with the small silver dollars in it. Again, temporary. Be fine, be fine. So, I have to get the fish out, so we have to get the big net out. Um, they're already hiding, so I'm not sure how long this will take. But I've matched the temperatures. It's the same water, it should be good to go. I'm just gonna give it a go. We have Gordon, who's a big old lad. Moments like this that make me question whether having all my computers over there was really a good idea. It wasn't. Brian's out. That wasn't too bad. Two done. Now all the hiding fish. Right, next day, Mega Tank is completely drained. Um, I've got a fan that I've left in here running overnight just to dry everything out and scraped everything away from the side. Um, I'll take you in in a second and show you what I was concerned about. But all the other fish from Mega Tank are okay. They're in various tanks around the place. I'll show you them. So the tank next to my desk, we've got the two Oscars, the giant Garami and the giant Snakehead. So it's a five foot tank. They can all move around and turn around, but yes, it is cramped, so we want to get this done as quickly as possible, but they're doing okay. And then down in the grow-out tank, we've got the Severum and the two larger silver dollars sharing the tank with the smaller silver dollars. 
they're doing okay too. But let's get in here. It's not very glamorous this, how we get in here, but basically, move around. And we're in. Uh, and what I was concerned about is down here. This corner here is where the leak is. So there's something getting out here and I suspect it's right there. Where the epoxy or the liquid rubber it hasn't quite stuck to the glass properly and it's delaminated a little bit. Now I can see this from outside but because of all the water I couldn't really see what was going on. But I suspect it's going in there and trickling down there. And I've just pulled some of the other stuff off as well just so we can have a look. So I've been running this fan just so as we can dry everything off. Uh, I'll sweep this up and then I'm basically just going to scrape everything away that I can. Another couple of layers of epoxy resin, fiberglassing. Top it off with some liquid rubber and we should be good to go. Right, it's been a few days because obviously everything takes time so I needed to get the water out and let it dry, get in there, do the fiberglassing, do the um, liquid rubbering, that's happened. All the fish, they're doing fine. Um, the silver dollars and the uh, several in one tank and then we've got all the, the big boys in the other tank. Man, do they produce a lot of poop. But anyway, we have, I think, finished. Here is Mega Tank. I've got this fan running just to help the drying process but basically down in that corner if you can see right in there that bumpy bit is where I added the extra metal bracket and when I added that I can't remember if I filmed it or not it did actually pull the the side in a little bit so that bit there where the join is definitely came in because it squeezed out a little bit of water so I think I identified where the hole was which is good I'm happy with that so putting in the bracket adding the fiberglass over the top of the bracket basically a fiberglass everything that you can see that's been painted has been refiberglassed so I sanded it all down added the fiberglass in and have gone over it with the liquid rubber which is what the black stuff that you can see bit of a manky job but it's done uh, I've had three or four coats of the liquid rubber and we're just about ready to go. I just want to give it a bit longer to dry out, basically. So one of the other upgrades that I want to make in here is I did have these sponge filters this size uh, in either corner, which was just to help with moving some water around, getting a few bubbles in, that kind of thing. I'm going to upgrade one of them to this big boy, which is at least twice the size, and get another big old airstone just to get behind some of the decorations and move some more air and move some more water around so it helps with dead spots so I know it's not really a monster tank like this sponge filters is not really the answer they're not really here for filtration it's just to move some air around and this big air stone is always good oxygenation is always a good thing in the aquarium so we're going to get them installed rearrange everything and I'm actually confident for once touching wood everywhere should be good can also get in it and just give the glass a bit of a scrape from when I've been really sloppy with the liquid rubber and marked the glass so we'll get that all cleaned up as well. I can just make things look a little bit better but I'm basically going to just rearrange some of the rocks that I was a little bit concerned about because big fish move big things and um, so I'll put a little bit of reinforcement in places where there is a, a bit of a risk of them falling just get it a little bit nicer. So while well, I'm loath to say I think that'll be mega tank problem free now, I've come to accept that this just might be an ongoing thing where we have to do maintenance every now and again. But I'm hoping this will be the end of the leaks at least, if nothing else. That is a ridiculously big sponge filter. But this is a ridiculously big fish tank. So all the upgrades that I planned are done, to the pipe work at least, the holes have been fixed and I'm fairly confident this time. Um, it has run problem free for nigh on a year 
and it was only the tiniest of leaks so that little patch job should do the trick um, but come back and see next time because this thing it takes a good day to fill and then another couple of days to get up to temperature so it'll be after Christmas before we get the fish back in so click that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing that um, like I say I'm more hopeful this than I usually am if you want to come and join me on my live stream every Friday we do a live stream where we have a bit of a quiz this Friday will be a Christmas quiz if you're watching this on the day it came out with some prizes so come along you might win something um, otherwise yeah click that subscribe button thank you for joining me have a happy Christmas and a fantastic new year if I don't see you before then see you in the next one bye